welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, we've got a row rut fest for you this week. We're in two great English hotspots for row, Somerset and Hampshire. We're on a grand estate in Derbyshire, talking to His Grace about how he keeps the whole thing afloat. First, the grouse shooting season gets going on the glorious 12th of August. But what are the prospects for this king of English game birds? If you want to shoot grouse in 2011, the place to be unquestionably is England. Never forget, these beautiful uplands would be wastelands without gamekeepers looking after them. It is the only bird that we have in this country, which is which you cannot find anywhere else in the world. Um, the red grouse, uh, as I say, it's, in, it's indigenous to the British Isles, and if anybody wants to shoot it as one of the fastest, most sporting game birds in the world, you have to come here to do it. And because of that, there is also a limited supply of it. And it's like anything that is a slightly scarce resource in world terms anyway, um, you know, that scarcity uh, has a certain value for it. Grouse populations go up and down each year like, well, you probably know someone who has a lot of up and downy things. But now, compared to the old days, they're going steady thanks to medicated grit. In a remote area of England such as this, grouse unquestionably bring in a superb amount of money. They were very pleased, despite it being such a terrible uh, late May and early June, the grouse have come through well. And therefore there's, there's uh, a real opportunity for uh, bring in income to the uplands with shooting parties that come and stay here and they spend money here you know and uh, it's an absolutely crucial part of the economy so it's a great relief that there's shooting to be had. You might associate grouse with the highlands of Scotland but it's going to be tough finding birds there this year. Grouse shooting. In the words of Ferris Bueller it is so choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend you pick one up. Now, a new regular item for the programme. It's over to David Wright on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. Welcome to Field Sports Britain News. After an investigation by Mail on Sunday journalist Valerie Elliott, the government has put Canada Goose back on the menu. The bird is classed as a pest species, but up to now you've not been allowed to sell them. Incredibly, flogging a Canada goose carried a £5,000 fine or a six-month prison spell. Eastern European poachers are decimating our salmon stocks in our rivers. According to environmental groups, gangs are illegally plundering the river's wise stocks to feed themselves and to sell onto the black market. The number of wild salmon in the river has plummeted by 57% over the past two years. A 400 bird day is being offered in a prize draw being organised by the Countryside Alliance. Tickets cost £25, but the winner can take six to nine guns to one of the estates run by Bettis Hall in a day worth nearly £20,000. Visit www.countrysidealliance.org.uk for more details. Our rabbiting cheetah has been given a reprieve. Bumani lives at Eagle Heights in Kent, which was banned by the local council from showing his speed, chasing a lure on a wire. After pressure from this programme and his owners, the council has lifted the ban. There's a free competition worth £4,000 being offered in Sporting Shooter this month. Zeiss, Rivers West, Lacrosse Boots and Pine Forest Lodge in Perthshire are offering the trip to the winner drawn from the correct answers to a simple quiz. And if you're the lucky one, Field Sports Channel will be there to film your day. And finally, Field Sports Channel has won an award. Well, to be more accurate, my esteemed colleague Charlie has won an award. Congratulations to him. Our presenter was named Country Sports Journalist of the Year at the CLA Game Fair by judges from all the main shooting and angling organisations. You're now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. We would now, of course, give you the weather, but you can probably see it behind me. Next, the roe rut has been underway for the last few weeks. We're off to a couple of the roe deer's top hotspots to call them in. Forget our magnificent Scottish stags. Forget our great park fallow. Other countries do those deer so much better. Where Britain excels is in the size of our roe deer, and the Somerset levels are home to some of the world's biggest roebuck heads. This makes it a magnet for foreign big game hunters. 
<laughs> Dirk Waldmann is editor of the German hunting magazine Pirsch. He has come to hunt roebuck in Somerset with sporting agent Leo Naylor. The British stalkers understand this kind of thing? or, or I, is th- this I think they do, but they're not quite so well trained as the Continentals. They, they buy a go- Some of them are very good, obviously, but most recreational stalkers buy a a call and go out and hope something will happen and and occasionally it does it's a, it's another aid which we can use in the ruts which we can't use in april and may for instance when uh, it, it, they just won't take any notes of it how do you make that noise i have this little whistle it's um done by by horn it's a specialist in germany who um, is working on it and i i'll be trained by by a very nice guy, it's, he's called Erich Marek and he's, he's a specialist in calling roe deer. And uh, he teaches it to me and I do it now since, since a lot of years and I enjoy it very, very much. So do you have to learn this like I'd, ha- I'd learn the flute or the clarinet or something like that? That's right, you have to learn it. Can you give it's, not, it's not so easy, uh, especially with this instrument, but uh, you can learn it and, and if, you, if you have it and, and the roe come, if they like. Yeah. Do, do you use these, Leo? I do. I use them, but not as good as Dirk. But sometimes I am spectacularly successful, but most of the time nothing happens. Can you can you give us a blast? Just yes, show. yes. Uh, so um, the whistle or the call for the beginning of the rut is a very very simple. So this is a, the tone for in the beginning and and then at the end of the rut you can start with his tone. But then when, when it's really finished and the box are a little bit tired and they are rested, th- and then the rut starts again or the, the calling time starts again, you have to, to make much more noise and uh, you have to to um, call persuade them much them harder. To stand up. To Pardon? persuade yeah, them to yeah, yeah. Th- th- there's just one more right. female yeah, yeah, to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. 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 To, to remind them that there could be some interesting uh, girl for them. Yeah? So it's a little bit like a school disco, isn't it, in that respect? Yes, yes it is. is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, do, do yeah that so I, I, I do it now. I'm expecting a stampede of roebuck. Oh, it's, just, yeah. it's just to make her sound desperate. So Dirk blanks in the morning, but if you're after the big bucks, you have to be patient. Back at Leo's base, it's a hive of activity. A local Somerset airgun club is holding a -a have-a-go day in the paddock next to his house. And a party of Germans who have been with Leo all week are collecting their heads, boiled out and bleached, ready to go home. Each of these weighs more than 500 grams. They are all gold medal heads. The following morning it's up early again and this time Dirk is out with one of Leo's stalkers, Tim. On the walk in there's plenty of early morning wildlife to surprise. We find a good spot behind bales and below a wood where Tim knows there to be a good buck. After a while Dirk's calling produces activity. First a rutting buck and doe cross the field. He's showing off his muscles, she's egging him on. Then the buck that Tim is after comes out of the wood. But things don't go quite according to plan. The big buck disturbs a little buck and a doe on the other side of the hedge, and due to his impressive head, he displaces the little buck. Women, eh? (laughs) That small buck decides to come and make friends with Dirk, who is being as seductive as Lottie Lenya. The little fellow is clearly a bit nervous, probably aware that he could be chased off by the big buck, but Dirk's calls are irresistible. As he comes nearer, Tim tells Dirk not to shoot. This may be a young buck, but he has a good thickness of antler. Give him a couple of years and he'll be able to spread his genes far and wide and make a gold medal head for a visiting deer stalker. Leo Naylor charges upwards of a thousand pounds for a gold medal roebuck. That sounds a lot, but it is a quarter of the cost of the same head in Hungary and a small fraction of what they charge in Sweden. Britain is Europe's bargain basement for bucks. For more about what the Germans think of our stalking, visit the Pirsch website www.jagderleben.de for Deutschland. From one side of the country to the other, Roy Lupton is calling in roebucks in Hampshire. Let's see if he has any success. Wouldn't life be boring without hormones? 
The chemicals of love that interest us this evening are those surging through the arteries of our beautiful native roe deer. It has been a stinking hot day, but we're promised storms later. If it's a bit muggy, we should have a good reaction to the call. Roy has this bit of land in Hampshire that he hasn't touched for 12 months. He's on the lookout for a special buck which he hopes hasn't either been had by a neighbour or been pushed out by the sheep. Roe and Roy hate sheep and he fears deer numbers will be down as a result. When you walk through a sheep field it, it smells quite badly um, and it must taint the, uh, the grass as well and the grazing. So when you've got uh, fields like that, particularly with Roe, you might see Roe crossing through them. Um, and you might see young bucks that have been pushed out of territories that are searching around in a sheep field, but you know the main, the main bulk of your row will be uh, well away from them. We start the stalk along a manicured ride and within five minutes spot a young doe. She is intoxicated by the call and comes back time and time again. Roy tries to push her away from where we want to end up so that she doesn't spook his buck before we get there. It doesn't quite work. Just had that the doe uh, come out of here. I just spotted her behind the long grass. And so we just had a little bit of a play with her just to have a better look at her um, and see what was going on. So she responded a little bit to the call, was curious. And so she's, she's not sure what was going on really or what we were. Um, ideally I wanted her to go that way so I suppose I should have just not, not played with her and let her go but unfortunately she's gone back up to where we want to stalk but that's no, uh, no big deal, we'll have a, have a look up there and uh, hopefully she'll come back and feed down this way. We carry on and again the doe is in evidence. We have to be careful, disturbing all the other deer would be a real pain. Roy calls again. There's a commotion and our doe comes charging through the undergrowth. We're so taken by her antics we don't realise there's a buck that sidled up to us, just a few yards off to the right. Roy stops him with a call. It's not the buck he was after, but he's a good one to take. Isn't that amazing though? We've stalked all through this bit of ground and the doe went off being chased by a buck here and then that other buck came in directly behind us came in unfortunately he made us because we were looking that way and then went off managed to stop him with the call again and uh, there he is we got him so not a bad result the old heart's still ticking i love this we cross to the other side of the ground and find another couple of crazy does it's astonishing and wonderful to see wildlife so close Roy is able to manipulate their behaviour with his butelo. Again, they're so revved up that Roy has to try and stop them disturbing possible unseen bucks further along the wood. Is there a butler? After a fabulous performance by Roy and the does, we head across to another block of land in the hope of getting another buck. The light is fading fast and again a doe shows herself. This time she has two kids with her. She charges across to us, then goes for the woods.
It's been a real privilege to see these animals at such close range and the end of July and beginning of August is the time to do it. It's just a shame that the girls want to play more than the boys. However, two days earlier it had been a different bull game. Roy and his friend Andy filmed these bucks coming to the call on this same farm. When they're in the mood, they're in the mood, and our very own Dr. Doolittle yep. doesn't stop with deer. On the way home, we hear a tawny owl. Roy clears his throat and joins in. The owl comes to have a look. It's not what you've got, it's how you use it. From attracting deer to attracting tourists, the Duke of Devonshire explains how he keeps Chatsworth both a going concern and a great sporting estate. It doesn't get more dramatic than this. Tucked into the sheep farming country of Derbyshire is a house and estate that has been welcoming visitors for more than 300 years. The Duke of Devonshire's family has received honours and awards for centuries. In their latest, their Chatsworth estate has won a Lifetime Achievement Award in the finals of the Countryside Alliance Awards. I think that this award, which obviously we were very, very excited about and still are, it, it, it is an accumulation of things and it is really a credit to my parents who, who were here for 50 years or more, um, slowly changing the whole thing, slowly revitalizing it, slowly improving it, slowly looking at possibilities. But most of the best ideas came from things, my mother thinking, well, it's crazy that school children, even locally, don't know where milk comes from. So then eventually we, she started the uh, farmyard exhibition uh, and still, to this day, 30-odd years later, there is every day a, a, a cow milked in front of children, parents, teachers, much to many of their absolute horror. The idea that you have to kill a beast to get a hamburger it, it is not easily understood by many people. We need to explain that. Otherwise, they, people think that farming is just something that happens somewhere else. Chatsworth may have family heritage going back hundreds of years, but it has a forward-looking management team. Diversification is the key, I think, for most estates. Uh, many um, derive very little of their income from farming. We're fortunate because we do have quite a large uh, let agricultural portfolio. Uh, 23,000 acres of the estate is let to, to tenant farms. It is still very important and we, we mustn't forget that. But Chatsworth, probably more than any estate, I would say, in the country, has been involved in diversification going back 30 or 40 years and we're, we're just developing and growing and improving that all the time. The Countryside Alliance Award is the first of its kind and was given in recognition of Chatsworth's role in sparking the local food movement as well as furthering rural tourism and contributing to the local community. It was a great honour for us and we were, we were chuffed to bits to receive this award. We're great fans of the Countryside Alliance. It was an endorsement of all the hard work that so many people on this estate have put in to the estate over many years. Uh, not, not just now, where we're very proud of what we do, but also um, it acknowledges the achievements, in particular, of the Dowager Duchess of Devonshire, who, way back in the 1970s, was pioneering uh, farm retailing. You know, she was really one of the first people who started to sell farm, good quality, local produce to local people. And, um, We've just, we've just taken that forward and moved it ahead over the years to what is now a very successful uh, farm shop business. So, what's next for Chatsworth? I have a feeling we hardly scratched the surface, actually.
Well, we're back next week with more grouse shooting and anything that counts as the best of British hunting, shooting and fishing. This has been Field Sports Britain. If you're watching this on the old YouTube, please hit the subscribe button, which is about there on the screen. If you're watching this on the new version of YouTube, it's down there. If you go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, scroll down to the bottom and you can pop your email address into our constant contact email form or click to like us on Facebook, same place, or follow us on Twitter and you will get news of our fantastic programme every week. <laughs>